Hello, this is Ian Lewins, the Foundation Programme Tutor here in Derby. Um, and in this short video, I'll hopefully um, introduce you to the Horus ePortfolio, which is the repository for all the information that you need to collect and evidence uh, towards a successful ARCP at the end of the year, your annual review of competency progression. Two ways to access Horus. Um, if you're at home, you simply Google Horus ePortfolio and it's the first thing that will appear. And this is the landing page that, that you'll get. Equally, if you're at work, uh, if you click on the Internet Explorer icon on any desktop within the Trust, it'll bring up the Trust's Flow uh, intranet page. And within that page, you'll see a small square icon that gives you a shortcut link to the Horus ePortfolio. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is sign in. And it will take me to this uh, thoroughly unexciting looking uh, landing page. I have a different page to you because I've got an administrator page. So you'll have a more basic one. So what I just want to do is to show you a bit around this. Um, and very kindly, one of my previous supervisees has allowed me uh, and agreed for me to sort of show you her e-portfolio um, for, for educational purposes. So if I just click on here. I can have a look at uh, this trainee. Um, so at the very top of this page, this uh, this is the overview page that we've got. And it gives uh, your demographic details, so your name, your email, uh, those sorts of things. If they are incorrect, then please let us know because they need to be correct. The next thing you hopefully will do is upload a picture. Uh, so Emma chose not to. Um, but I would strongly encourage you to do so. It just makes it so much easier for us to be able to put a face to a name. Um, if there are any problems or questions or concerns, I, I can say, oh, yeah, it's that person. So please do that. Um, the best way probably to navigate around your ePortfolio is to use this orange bar uh, over here. And if you click on that, you'll get a drop down menu, uh, which will we'll sort of walk our way through and, and I'll talk you through. The first one is the page that we're currently on, which is the overview page. Um, and the overview page is very handy for you and for your uh, educational clinical supervisors to give a sort of at a glance, where am I up to in terms of things that I needed to have done? Um, so if we click on that, I say it'll come back to this page and it allows you and me to see, OK, what, what are the placements that I'm doing? Uh, during my time here and who are the educational and clinical supervisors now you might not have had these allocated to you yet on, on ePortfolio but you certainly should for your first placement have your named educational and clinical supervisor and an email that you can email them on if they're wrong or there are any questions let us know in the postgrad center okay so that's where am I going to be working for the next year um, we'll come back to ARCP uh, in a minute the next section is looking at your curriculum, and again, I'll, I'll return to this shortly. Um, next is your uh, SLEs, your supervised learning events, and it allows you and me to see, OK, where am I up to in terms of the number that are completed so far? Where am I getting up in terms of the number I need to do and progression for ARCP? Your core procedures um, will uh, appear here. So it allows you and me to see how many have I done of the 15 that I need to do. And if there are any outstanding, it'll allow you to click down and say which are the ones that I need to do. And, and you can then target those. Any reflections that you complete will appear here. Your mandatory certificates uh, will appear here. And for you as F1s, the two that we were wanting to see here are your uh, immediate life support or equivalent certificates and your uh, prescribing safety assessment certificates, the PSA. Those two need to appear here. So those are the mandatory certificates that need uploading. OK. Your PDPs will appear here. So there should be a PDP for each of your clinical placements. So there should be three in total. And if you've got any other PDPs that you want to do throughout your attachment, then that's fine. They can appear there. Um, your signed probity, health and conditions of uh, joining a foundation training programme all need to, to appear here. So your signed declarations, they'll appear there. So this page, the overview page, gives at a glance, where am I up to? OK, 
is a handy page. The next page on the drop down menu is the contents page. And the contents page uh, is, is sort of a slightly longer version. It gives everything that you've done. Um, so, for example, and, and it appears here in um, uh, chronological order. So uh, you can see that the first thing that uh, Emma uploaded was her PDP. And then she started to upload some of her core procedures as time went by. So everything that you do in, in chronological order will appear here. So I've got core procedures, uh, I've got reflections, uh, again, a second PDP, some mandatory certificates. So they're all starting to appear here. And on the right hand side, they've just sort of categorized them a bit easier for you. So left hand side, chronological order, right hand side is, is sort of categorizing them. So all my core procedures will appear here. So if I want to have a look at those, I can click on that and it will just subdivide those up. So I can see all the core procedures are there. Okay, so that is the um, contents page. So that's everything that you're doing. The next page that's worth looking at is the curriculum page. Okay, so within the uh, curriculum, uh, which is a lengthy document uh, that it's worth just casting your eye over, um, there are 20 domains that you need to show evidence for uh, for satisfactory ARCP progression. Okay, and of those 20 domains, they're grouped up into four sections. So section one is professional behavior and trust. Section two is communication, team working and leadership. Section three is clinical care. Uh, section four is safety and quality. And as you can see, each uh, section is broken down into sort of subdomains and there are a total of 20 domains. OK, you need to map evidence for each single domain for satisfactory ARCP progression. And you can see that when you map stuff, so when you completed it, the date appears here. And when you map it, it appears here. If I just go back briefly to the contents page, you'll see that, so for example, this uh, core procedure that was undertaken here, for each thing there'll be a map to curriculum option. If you click on that and where you want to map that to, which domain you want to map that to, it'll do it for you. Okay, I hope that makes sense. At the end of the year, your educational supervisor needs to assess your curriculum and decide whether you've satisfactorily completed that. Um, so if I just go back to overview again, you'll see down here on curriculum that for each of the four sections, the educational supervisor has to provide a progress rating as either satisfactory incomplete or partially completed and they all need to be satisfactory for your ARCP to be successful okay so that's what the curriculum is so my advice to you is start getting into the habit of linking things to your curriculum early it is much better to do that and, and get into the habit of whenever you upload something so if it's a core procedure or reflection immediately map it to the curriculum it just makes life so much easier for you rather than having to do it in a big rush at the end so that's curriculum section Next is the PDP, the Personal Development Plan. And as I said before, there needs to be one for each of your placements. OK, and again, there's this option to map that plan to your curriculum. And if I click on there, I can uh, look at that PDP and review it. Um, but they should be discussed with your educational supervisors at your start of placement meetings. So that's PDP. Any reflections that you complete will appear in this subsection. And again, there's the option to map them to the curriculum. Um, and this is anything that you wish to reflect on in your time. So, uh, for example, Emma's reflected on some acute SIM training, but she's also reflected on um, a first DNA CPR discussion with relatives and what she's learned from that. So reflections will appear here. Next is the tab button. And tabs we'll talk about in greater detail shortly, but this is essentially a, what's called a team assessment of behaviour tab. And this is uh, completed in your first two placements. So the national guidance says that you need to have at least one satisfactory tab in your time uh, as an F1. 
local guidance as, as stipulated by uh, Health Education England working across the East Midlands says that we would like you to have two satisfactory tabs and they will appear here uh, and we'll give you further details about the tabs in due course. If for whatever reason your tab is unsatisfactory then you'll be asked to complete a third tab round in your third placement to make sure that we've got a total of two satisfactory tabs. So tabs appear here. Um, any career planning that you do will appear here. So again, we don't really expect much in this. And, and like I say, Emma has simply um, uh, done a, a brief reflection, which she's mapped to a curriculum that we could open and read. Um, the mandatory certificate section is greyed out and is not functional at the moment, so don't worry about that. And then the last bit is the e-learning for health. Now you should all have an e-learning for health account. If you haven't, please contact the uh, postgrad team uh, as soon as possible and we'll sort that out for you. You will then need to connect your Horus ePortfolio to your eLearning for Health account. And when it's connected, it will appear here as in green as connected. If it's not connected, it will appear red as not connected. Um, and you do that through the eLearning for Health uh, account that you have. So on the eLearning for Health website, you connect it up to your Horus ePortfolio. And then any eLearning for Health that you do on that website should automatically get uploaded here to your eLearning for Health section, which you can then, again, map to your curriculum. OK, so that's there. So that's very much running through the various subsections that you've got uh, on this right hand side. I just very, very quickly want to look uh, back at the overview page and look at ARCP. Now, obviously, this is a little way off yet, and ARCPs tend to occur in June and July. Um, but if you click on the summary of evidence form, this is the section that we will be using at your ARCP to make a decision on whether you've satisfactorily completed all requirements for the year and we can pass you through to F2 year. So have a look through these sections and these requirements. Um, some of them you won't be able to do yet, um, some of them you will. So provisional registration, that should be there. If it And your GMC number should be there. Um, if it's not, let us know as soon as possible. The next requirement is completing 12 months of airborne training. Well, OK, you can't have done that yet, um, uh, but that will be assessed at the end. You need an educational supervisor's satisfactory end of year report. That will appear there. And educational supervisors and clinical supervisors end of placement reports will appear here and they all need to be signed off. So there's my ed super and my clinical supervisor. You should have all uh, 20 domains mapped in your curriculum and all deemed as satisfactory by your educational supervisor. Uh, you need two satisfactory tabs. They appear here. All 15 of the G GMC mandated procedures appear here. The PSA appears here, the ILS appears here. The next section is about quality assurance and audit. Now, as an F1, you do not have to do an audit, but if you choose to do an audit or quality improvement project, you can use that and count it as evidence for F2. So in F2, you will have to do an audit or quality improvement project. If you choose to do it in F1, you don't have to do it in F2, and that can appear here. All your other uh, quality improvement bits will appear here, and those are your end of placement surveys and your GMC surveys, and they must be there. Then there are all your SLEs, they will appear here. An acceptable attendance, and the minimum requirement is 70% at uh, all generic teaching, so your Tuesday lunchtime teaching, your teaching attendance will appear here. And your signed declarations will appear here. And we're looking for all of these to be completed for a satisfactory ARCP. So that's it. The Horus support site has much, much longer videos that I don't think are much more helpful than this. Um, but what I would say is that, look, your, your clinical education supervisors have had a year to get used to this portfolio, and they're fairly used to it now. So use them. Speak to us if you've got any concerns. But just generally have a look around it. Get used to it and start to link and upload stuff early. OK, but if you've got any questions or any concerns, please speak to me or the postgrad team and we'll be very happy to point you in the right direction. OK, uh, thank you for listening.